We're a couple months in, but we already know it's going to be a pretty big year for the PlayStation 4. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 30 new PS4 games of 2020. Starting off at number 30, it's Predator Hunting Grounds, a new asymmetrical shooter in which some interesting ideas are experimented with. First off, it's not just incredibly powerful monster guy versus four other guys. Obviously, the idea is to escape. The team has to get away from the Predator and to the chopper. Yes, I said it that way. No, you can't do anything about it. And the team also has other objectives besides survive, with the Predator having some elements balanced to make it more of a challenge. For instance, all of his abilities, all of his abilities and weapons are tied to a single battery. I don't know, this one's got some serious potential. They're doing a multiplayer trial on March 27th, and Predator Hunting Grounds will fully launch April 24th. At number 29 is Marvel's Iron Man VR, an exclusive PSVR game in which you play as Tony Stark in the Iron Man suit. Now, obviously watching somebody else play a VR game isn't quite the same as playing it yourself, but what we've seen of it is pretty impressive. It looks like it's a lot of fun. The presentation I've watched where they've done a demo, the person playing the game tends to get involved in it to a point where they stop listening to the other people. And I take that as a good sign because I want to fly around as Iron Man. I want to shoot lasers out of my hands. It sounds like a good time. And you know I'm going to be giving it a shot when it comes out on PlayStation 4, May 15th. At number 28 is Persona 5 Royal, which isn't just adding a few more characters or a few more scenarios, it's adding another semester to the game. A lot of fan service, including a new area where you can do team building stuff, playing pool, playing darts. And of course, it's Persona 5. How could you not want to play Persona 5? It's just an amazing game. But this is a much bigger version of Persona 5, with tons more content being added to the seminal JRPG. Persona 5 Royals coming March 31st. And number 27 is The Pathless. This is, I mean, just in every way a beautiful looking game. It's coming to us by way of Giant Squid Studios, who most recently gave us the incredible Abzu. The Pathless is a mythic adventure game where you play as an archer accompanied by a trusty eagle with the objective of hunting various corrupted spirits. Now what exactly that means, I don't know. But what we've seen of this game, which admittedly is not a lot, is gorgeous and looks incredibly fun. The Pathless will be hitting sometime this year. At 26 is Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is going to basically be an overhaul of Yakuza. It's not an action game, it's a JRPG turn-based specifically, and honestly, I think it could work. I'm at least optimistic about it, although I'm a little bit confused. Is it a spin-off, or is this a totally new direction for the series? I'm not sure. That said, their intent is to make a game that is quite a bit different than Yakuza, and I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. We'll see when Yakuza Like a Dragon hits sometime 2020. At number 25 is Wild, an open-world survival game coming to us from Wild Sheep Studio, a game set in the Neolithic period where you have access to some shamanic powers, like possessing animals, which you'll use to spy on other people as you attempt to survive in a large procedurally generated world. Wild Sheep Studio, the creator, was founded by the creator of Rayman and Beyond Good and Evil to PlayStation Classics. This is a game that's been in development for a long time. We haven't heard a lot about it, but we've got our fingers crossed for 2020. At 24 is Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, a fighting game based on the RPG Grand Blue Fantasy that manages to really look like a 2D fighting game without really being one. What's interesting is it will have a fighting game and a story mode, which is essentially a beat em up, as in with bosses and co op, and that sounds cool as hell. Grand Blue Fantasy is hitting in North America on March 3rd. At number 23 is Sakura Wars, what is billed as a cross genre game. It's an action RPG, a dating sim, a visual novel. You know, it really runs the gamut. It's also interestingly enough built on the Hedgehog engine and contains several developers from Sonic, so you know that there's some weirdness involved. You've got demons to fight. But yeah, this is the sixth mainline Sakura Wars game, and it's apparently a soft reboot. It does definitely look like something a little different, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Soccer Wars is coming out April 28th. 
At number 22 is Beyond Good and Evil 2, the sequel to the cult classic, it's a space pirate adventure game, and information's pretty sparse on this game, and there's a good chance we'll be waiting quite a while for it, perhaps even into 2021. However, this game bears a mention anyway. The original was really a lot of fun, had tons of personality, and it was a long time ago, so it's really cool that we're getting a sequel slash prequel sometime in the future. Beyond Good and Evil 2, we don't know when it's coming out, but it's hopefully this year. At number 21 is Dreams, the game slash art creation thing. I've been playing Dreams for a while now. I really enjoy it. I did the before you buy for it. It's oddly intuitive. It's really cool looking, and I'm still not a lot better at it. However, there's a lot more content growing all the time on this platform, and it's amazing to jump into other people's creations. Sometimes it's astounding when you consider the idea that a game is basically just something somebody made in their free time. If you're interested in more on that, look at my Before You Buy. Dreams is already out. It's definitely worth the ticket price. At number 20 is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, a retelling of the Dragon Ball saga as an open world game. Now, this game is not without its flaws. However, it's also really probably the definitive video game retelling of this saga. On top of that, it's a lot of fun with a few novel approaches at some RPG staples that in a lot of ways keeps it simple without being dumb. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is out now. At number 19, it's MLB The Show 20, the latest iteration of the Major League Baseball game vastly expands the minor league, which was previously very generic, now has fully licensed players. It will be interesting to see what they do after last year's game, which was pretty good and received a fair amount of praise. MLB The Show 20 is coming out March 17th. At number 18 is Outriders, which comes to us from People Can Fly, the developers of Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. Outriders looks to maintain a fair amount of influence from Gears of War. Outriders is a three-player co-op centric title set in a post-apocalyptic world. It also has a fair set of RPG elements. I don't know, it looks really intriguing to me, and I definitely want to give it a shot when it comes out sometime this year. At number 17 is Ubisoft's Gods and Monsters, coming to us from the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It is taking a very clear influence from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, of course. However, it's obviously steeped in Greek mythology, and we don't know exactly to what extent it will be following the Breath of the Wild formula. My guess is, play-wise, it's probably going to be a little bit closer to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, with some Breath of the Wild elements thrown in. We don't have a release date, it is hitting sometime this year though, and we're looking forward to it a great deal. And number 16 is Neo 2, which looks to give you a little more freedom in that you create your character at the start. Personally, I hope this isn't at the detriment to the game. Part of what made Neo very good was actually the protagonist. That doesn't mean that I don't welcome character creation in Neo 2. I do, as well as simply welcoming a lot more Neo action. Seriously, this is the sequel to one of the best Souls-like games out there. And number 15 is Skull and Bones, the open-world naval combat game, which is based on the naval play from Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And that is great. This is a game that we've known about for quite a while. It was announced quite a while back, and frankly, I've been on board since the beginning. The ship play from Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but as a full game. Yes, that's it. I'm ready. We do not have a specific date, but Skull and Bones is coming sometime this year, supposedly. At number 14 is Disintegration, a very different looking game set on a post-apocalyptic Earth where human brains are inside robot bodies. The game is touting the idea of a grave cycle, which is a hover motorcycle that's pretty cool. And the world itself it exists in is pretty cool. Obviously, we're going to need more. Information is kind of minimal now, but the trailers look phenomenal. Disintegration is coming sometime this year. At number 13 is Kerbal Space Program 2, an ambitious upgrade coming to us from Star Theory Games, a different developer, where we'll be seeing a large amount of new types of propulsion. We'll be seeing colonies. Honestly, it looks like a pretty drastically expanded game, which is what we need from a new developer trying to prove themselves with what is honestly just a phenomenal game. We don't have a specific release date, but Kerbal Space Program 2 is coming sometime this year. And number 12 is the Destroy All Humans remake, a game that I am 
ever so here for. Destroy All Humans is a classic. I love it. I think it's funny. I think it's fun. And I'm extremely excited to see them totally remaking it with all of the original voice acting. For all intents and purposes, it looks like they're sticking pretty close to the original, albeit with much better graphics. And that's what I want. Seriously, if you've never played this game, this is one you have to consider. I love Destroy All Humans. The game's currently slated for spring. We don't have a date yet, but really looking forward to it. At number 11 is Marvel's Avengers, which we've been anticipating for quite a while. We saw a lot of what this game is going to be fairly recently. In a lot of ways, it looks to take some cues from the Spider-Man PS4 game, as well as throwing in a lot of cinematic stuff, some QTEs, and honestly, it looks like it might be shaping up to be a pretty interesting game. The plot is certainly a bit different, taking place after superheroes being outlawed for the most part anyways. It was delayed, but mainly to make the game better before release. It's always hard to criticize that kind of a reason. I would always rather have a better game. And it's coming September 4th. At number 10 is LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. You have to know what LEGO Star Wars is at this point. It's an action-adventure game with fun gameplay and a lot of silly humor set in the Star Wars saga. This will span the entire nine movie saga. I know a lot of people are going to enjoy this game and that's not just children, although children will probably be all over it. In truth, the Lego Star Wars games have always been a ton of fun. I've always enjoyed them and I'll play this. We don't have a specific date, but it's coming this year. At number nine is Watch Dogs Legion, the third in the Watch Dogs series, also possibly the most intriguing scenario. It's set in a post-Brexit alternate future in which London has become a police state. You are setting up the resistance. Of course, CTOS is responsible for everything. And in a police state, that's kind of scary. I think it's honestly a pretty good idea on account the previous games were set in a CTOS rising situation. Obviously, CTOS was implemented, but this is a different ballgame. Watch Dogs Legion will hit sometime this year. At number 8 is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, the sequel to the 2004 cult classic video game. Bloodlines 2 takes place in 21st century Seattle, just around Christmas. Essentially, it's an alternate world in which vampires, demons, werewolves, etc. are the driving force behind a lot of the world's events. You're a thin blood vampire who is transformed in a big attack that rogue vampires caused and are basically thrust into an entirely new world. We don't have a date, but Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 will be hitting sometime this year. And at number seven is Elden Ring, the collaboration with From Software and George R.R. R. Martin that everyone is looking forward to. It's basically an open world take on the genre that From birthed, the Soulsborne, Souls-like, whatever you want to call it genre, with lore and story brought to us by one of the most celebrated modern authors out there, George R.R. R. Martin. I don't know how you could go wrong with this. It seems like a stretch to imply it could go bad. I'm of course very excited for this one. We don't yet have a specific release date, however it is supposed to come this year. Number six is Doom Eternal. I don't really know how on earth you could not want Doom Eternal. The Doom 2016 reboot is a hell of a lot of fun, no pun intended, and this is a bigger version of that with a grappling hook shotgun. I've said it in other videos, grappling hook shotgun is basically all that needs to be said, and I am there. I have zero complaints about anything I've seen for Doom Eternal so far other than the idea that it's not out yet. It will be hitting sometime this year, however, and you can bet I will be there. At number 5 is the Resident Evil 3 remake. I'm particularly excited about this game on account some of it takes place before Resident Evil 2, the rest after, and Resident Evil 3 is a fantastic game on itself. Knowing the treatment that Resident Evil 2 got for its remake, I'm extremely excited to see this. Yes, I absolutely want to play Resident Evil 3 like the Resident Evil 2 remake. That's hitting April 3rd, 2020. Be there. At number 4 is Ghosts of Tsushima, a beautiful looking action adventure game with elements of stealth and a large open world. The goal that Sucker Punch Productions set out to fulfill was to create something that made you feel like you were becoming a samurai. Of course, in every possible way, I want that. The game is set on Tsushima Island, the last obstacle between the conquering Mongol Empire and mainland Japan. You, Jin, the protagonist, have to learn the way of the ghost. Ghosts of Tsushima 
will be out in the fall. At number three is Cyberpunk 2077. How could you not want this game? I mean, this is basically technology Grand Theft Auto played from a first person perspective with the depth of Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and perhaps more. This is another game that got delayed by a little while. Again, when a developer wants to achieve a certain quality, however, it's really hard to argue with, but it's going to be hard to wait for September 17th for Cyberpunk 2077 to release. At number two is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Speaking of Cyberpunk, this is actually the first in several installments that we'll be seeing Final Fantasy VII's remake released in, this one being set in Midgar. Honestly, Final Fantasy VII is perhaps one of the coolest, most interesting, long-form games I've played in my life that says so much about the world we live in while being totally absurd. Seriously, if you spend any amount of time thinking about the scenario of this game, that's very silly. However, actually really easy to get lost in. Final Fantasy VII's remakes hitting April 10th. And finally, the big one, The Last of Us 2. Obviously, we all want The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us ended in such a way that, of course, we want to know what happened. Clearly, people are surviving. However, it's not the same as the authoritarian police state we're talking about living in the wilderness. Aside from knowing that the major characters return, we don't know a lot about the gameplay, although it's safe to assume it will be a lot like the first, or the story. Despite that, it's Last of Us 2. How could you not want Last of Us 2? And it's hitting on May 29th. And as a quick bonus for you, Rainbow Six Quarantine, which is based, of course, inspired by the Rainbow Six Siege Outbreak event. It's a three-player co-op hunt of a technological parasite. And honestly, it looks pretty good. However, with one caveat, there's a decent chance it's gotten delayed and may not come until early next year. Dying Light 2, the sequel to the parkour zombie game, which looks to expand greatly on player choice and its impact on narrative. Dying Light 2 got delayed indefinitely, so if we don't see it in 2020, I'm not going to be particularly shocked. That's all for today. What PlayStation games are you looking forward to the most? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.